Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Partnership for the Arts, where we talk art. We are in the studio in the library at the VAC, and I mean we. Of course, I mean Michelle. Hi. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing great. How are you, Dave? Doing good. Feeling blessed. Got my cup of coffee. Ready to go. Me too. And we got an exciting show today. I've been looking forward to this one. We're actually going to have Margaret Agley come in and uh, sit down and talk. She's an instructor here. So, you ready to go? Yes, let's start the show. Here we go. This is Partnership for the Arts. Come join us. As we explore the worlds of art. You can find all of our episodes on our Facebook page, Partnership for the Arts Group Talk Show. Or you can visit our new website, pftatalkshow.org. This show is recorded at the Visual Arts Center in Punta Gorda, Florida. Welcome back, everyone. We have Margaret Egley in the studio. Welcome, Margaret. Thank you. Yes, (laughs) Margaret, good to have you here. Good to see you again. You paint in oil, right? Colored ones. (laughs) (laughs) Colored ones, yeah. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) So, Margaret, I've got a question for you. Has oil always been your medium of choice? Actually, I start out as a watercolorist. And that was with nine years old, well, before that too, but I got my first commission when I was 10, 10 or 11. My grandmother gave me a photograph from Ballyshannon, which is a town on the west coast of Ireland. Mm -hmm. And my mother was born there, and then my grandmother wanted Mm -hmm. to have a photograph or a painting of that Ballyshannon, so I painted my first commission. I thought that was big. Wow, your first commission at 10. Yes. And now you're an accomplished instructor at the Visual Arts Center, isn't that right? I'm an instructor. Accomplished? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) You are. You do beautiful work. Yeah, we can testify. She's got beautiful work. Yes, and a great instructor. So, Margaret, as, as you just mentioned, growing up, where was that? That was in Belfast, actually, because... uh, Bally Shannon was on the in the era, you mm. know, so that was n- non-Protestant. It was all Catholic, and so the, my p- grandparents had to get out, and so then we all were in Belfast, which is the the north, mm-hmm. and it belongs to Great Britain, mm-hmm. and that was an interesting time. A very funny stories, you know, of going out at night at nine o'clock, getting dressed and. And going out to an air raid shelter, you know, which was really crazy. Air raid shelter, right. Yeah, right. and listening to the bombs coming down and the R- German World- planes flying over. Yeah, and World War Two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was crazy. But for the par- my parents, it was bad. My father worked in a company, Saunders Row, and they were building the Spitfire. The fighter aircraft. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, then he went, afterwards we went to Wales because he went with the company, Saunders Row, to Wales and they were building buses. After they, the war. Then. After yeah. the war, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. And then from where? There. From there? From where? From there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, too. <laughs> yeah. I actually, I stayed in Wales. Wales is absolutely beautiful. Mm. And they're very, very emotional people, and they have the very best voices. It's, uh, it's beautiful. And there I got to appreciate landscape. You know, their beautiful mountains mm. were actually are very rugged. It's not a it's not a place mm. like Switzerland or you know like Southern Ireland. It's it's very hard, you know, harsh, but not, beautiful. Not rolling hills. No, no, but uh, beautiful in itself, and and we could look from our house out onto the North Sea. It was it was an amazing wow. uh, area, and and it's formed me, you know, because then I started painting, you know, my watercolors, of course, which I think is one of the most difficult mediums. I would agree. If you paint exact, but if you paint free, you know, watercolors are fabulous, you know, can make very modern things and and they always look good, you know. And then I went with my parents from... Wales, from Liverpool, you know, where all of them went, to Canada, 
And uh, in Canada, I start to uh, paint more. Then eventually I went to the Canadian Ontario College of Art. Mm. And I was there for three and a half years. I never did make the fourth year. I didn't have any support from anybody. <laughs> so I, yes. I got a scholarship, but I knew that I was short on cash. And even though I was working weekends and summer and Easter holidays and everything, I just didn't have enough money. So I left and after three and a half years, which is a shame, you know. So what did you major in? I was in fine art the first year. Uh, the first year is kind of a, a mix. You do everything. And then the second year I was in fine art and I thought to myself, I'll never get a profession in fine art. That's really just for the real painters, you know? Okay. <laughs> and I, so, I, yeah, I can understand. What yeah, yeah, mean. it's mm-hmm. true. And so then anyway, I, I finished after three and a half years and I didn't want to lose, lose that money or the scholarship that I got. And I sent the scholarship back because, yeah, because I thought somebody else would be better off with it and I had not touched it. So, so then I was really broke. <laughs> so, but then I, I worked in graphic and then I moved to New York and I worked there in graphic and uh, graphic art. And when did you meet your husband? I had met my future husband in Canada. Mm -hmm. He was a medical doctor studying at the College of Chiropractic in Toronto. And I was in the College of Art and they really mix well, chiropractic and art. (laughs) But my my husband actually was a very interesting person because as a young, young man of 18, 19, when he was doing a gymnasium, what they call it in Switzerland. And that's like uh, here, grammar school or British grammar school mm-hmm. uh, or a extended secondary school, mm-hmm. you know. And he went with his bicycle to Italy, to France and visited all the top galleries and, and wow. looked at all the old churches in Italy. He had a very, very good time. And from then he said to me, stop with this stupid watercolor and paint oil <laughs> and, okay. and and then told me to keep at it and not do anything else because I always had ideas of what else I could do and and I did try once making Christmas decorations with a candle I gave it to my fr- my husband and to some of the people and and then one of them went on fire because I used n- flammable <laughs> cotton wool. Oh, my. <laughs> so I, I, I understood why my husband says, don't do anything else, <laughs> just paint oil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was funny. So then I painted oil, and I really liked oil. In the mm. beginning, it's difficult. It took me 10 years not to paint in a watercolor style. In other words, you don't draw and fill in, you know? Okay. You put, in, when you see something, you put it down flat with a, l- a larger brush, you put the area down and mm-hmm. you don't, and then you push the area to fill what you want, you know? Mm-hmm. But you don't draw it. So your process starts with color blocking things in, you would say? No, my process starts with doing acrylic color on the canvas itself because because impressionism is an art where you always have little holes over everywhere because with doing blocking in like that you can't get into all the corners if then the canvas is white then you have like highlights everywhere and it's very confusing and it spoils it spoils the picture because you can't tell which direction the light is coming from. Yeah, and so anyway, I, I always teach it like that. I teach it that you paint what you see, you paint what you feel, because actually when you see something, it, it is an emotional experience, which it's so fast, you don't even know it. But it's the reason why you choose a certain view, because it makes an impression on you. Okay. Otherwise, you can walk through the woods and you won't see anything, and all of a sudden, something strikes you, and then you think, ah, I want to do this, you know? And that's, 
that you have to relax and let it happen and not go and, and look for something and I'm going to paint this because it's a house there. And You have to feel it, you know. Okay, no, I got that. So can we back up for just a minute? I, I wanted to cover your painting again. So when you start out, you start out with canvas and you do acrylic and then oil over the acrylic? Yes, that white on there is already mm. an, 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 a type of acrylic, the mm. color on the canvas. So what color do you prime with then? It depends on the painting. Like for, for it's too bad I should have brought a painting in, um, <laughs> but you can't show it on radio. I, for, white, for winter scenes, I use an orange ground. Okay. Which is actually uh, crazy when you think. You yeah, know? I never would have guessed that. Yeah. yeah, because if you have all white and blue and purples, you know, the mountains or whatever, mm -hmm. then the orange ground is like a, a breath of fresh air. And when you're doing the tree, you know, on the orange, yeah. and you're in, in lime green and greens, light colors, uh -huh. because the white is the snow, mm -hmm. it's cold, mm -hmm. and then you have a tree sitting on the bank and it's of a, of a river that's half frozen or something, and then it's lighting. You can see the sunlight in it. And, it's, and it makes a difference, you know? And it makes a warm painting, although it's a winter scene. Right, because all those <coughs> layers of color kind of peek through. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly where you, where you don't cover, you know? Right. Right. I love your description of that because I can see that painting in my head. I, I'll show already. it to you it's, after I have it, one here. That's such detailed way of the way you paint. I love that, Margaret. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. That's yeah. wonderful. I feel like I just spent a few minutes in her class. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to try it sometime. Yes. I love to teach. Actually, I started teaching because I came here and I didn't know anybody. To Punta Gorda. In 2000, we came to Florida. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know anybody. We had certain friends that we had always visited when you came here mm -hmm. on holidays. But I, we moved up here to Englewood and so, uh, and Punta Gorda. And so around us, we didn't know anybody. There was a lot of people. So I thought I would do something that I can get in, in with people. And I love people. <laughs> <laughs> and I especially love the American people because they're very, very friendly. They're very nice. And that's a joy. There you go. How sweet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, you say we. I assume that was you and your husband. Yes. Right? Yeah. And the same one. The same one. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be clear. <laughs> yes, the same one. And his name? Arvid Egli. Yes, Arvid. It means born in the woods. Ah. Yes, and it's Swedish, actually. Okay, okay. And I, he's no longer with us. Is that right? What do you mean? Is he still alive? Yes, he's at home. <laughs> <laughs> do, doing the dishes. <laughs> oh, I love it. I was under the oh, impression the way you were talking about me. No, 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 no. Arvid, and I he's, apologize. <laughs> yeah, and he's also very, very interested in art. And we do trips to Europe. And we take 30 to 60 people. We have two trips. One trip, 30, and the next trip, 30. And we go to the same place each year. You Not each workshops, year. workshops, right? One year. They're workshops, yes. And the next year we go Ooh, to... Excellent. We were in Ireland. We were in Italy many times. And we were in Switzerland once and, we, and uh, in Austria many times. And then I teach there and it's so much fun. And again, the people are good fun. How many years have you been teaching, Margaret? But I think about 10 years. Yeah. So... I love this. I didn't know this. You and your husband, the same husband that, that's apparently still alive. <laughs> <laughs> so you're basically taking people a tour and workshops. And he and, does art history. And he does art history. Yeah. But n this next year we're going to Elsass in France, which is the north eastern corner of France. And it's bordering on uh, Germany and Switzerland. The students you bring with you, um, are they from all around the world? Do you have repeat students that like to come back every year? A, a lot of repeats and uh, mostly Americans. 
I've had Canadians, and uh, but from California to New Hampshire and everywhere, you know, which is kind of fun. So, what would it cost to take a trip like that? About this one is about three thousand with hotel, mm -hmm. you know, food, everything. My very important lectures. No, my husband's lectures. <laughs> I, and then the painting, and I, I do demos, you know, demo paintings. And then they have the hotel, the flight over, uh, all their meals except for lunch, but you can take your lunch from the breakfast if you want. And uh, trips, every other day we have a trip, and every other day we paint. And 14 days. Are you painting in plein air? Always, always. Okay. I really like to get my students outside because it's a different thing. It's also the very first time is, is challenging because you, you, know, you have this huge scenery and you have a little canvas because you're traveling. It's, um, right. How am I going to get all that on that little canvas? <laughs> <laughs> you can just put a bucket in the field. <laughs> No, it's a good it's a good exercise. Oh, that sounds fantastic! And you know, painting is a therapy. Yes, it is. See, if you're if you're a little bit crazy, <laughs> like me, aren't we all? Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a good therapy. It's it's you can be for yourself. Think what you want. It's marvelous, and my courses here, I think, I like them. My students like them. Yes, they do. You know. It's, it's very, very interesting. Yes. You know, I have many, many times, because I'm here at the VAC all the time, I have many times walked in and around your class with sure. your students painting, if you were set up in the main gallery or, or down there in golf gallery. And it is incredible because all the different people painting all those different things that, that they love to do, they love yeah. to work on. And I've seen your style of instruction and support that you give your students. And that's why you have repeat students that come. Yeah, back. yeah. That's, it, it is wonderful. And really, anyone that wants to see your kind of artwork can definitely come here and do that. You can definitely join the, the Margaret's class because it is, it is a phenomenal thing. And your students do have a lot of fun. Yeah. Today we're doing something different. I have brought a painting with me and everybody's going to do the same painting and I'm going to demo paint with them. Oh, okay. Just to see... A little different style. Give, no, that'll give them a chance to see how I build up, you know, because it's a bit of a challenge if you haven't done it before, you know, mm -hmm. oil anyway. What do you find is the most challenging lesson or skill for your students to learn? Portrait. Portrait. Okay. A little round ball with the two black spots and a line at the bottom. You know, it doesn't work. <laughs> I guess it does if you're doing the smiley face. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> wow. Okay. I didn't know that you taught portrait as well. I do, but you know, actually, not many people, uh, they're afraid to try, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. so, it's, it's also not rewarding if you don't get what you want. So it's better to start to learn how to paint in the impressionistic style, because I also do in the impressionistic style on my portraits. Yes. And I, my website, uh, which is margaretegley.com, mm -hmm. they can see all the portraits, all the landscapes. There you go. You know, gives them a chance to look at my work because, uh, you know, there's no point going to a class if you have no idea what's before you. True enough, true yeah. enough. And the fact is, I'm glad you mentioned the website because we were going to ask you for that and we'll make sure we have the link yes. to your website yes. when, when the show comes out. Yes. In fact, Michelle will make sure that link is there. Yes. She's very good at this kind of thing. Yeah, that's fantastic. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So, okay. You paint... Um, Neo-Impressionism. Yes. Isn't that right? What would you describe that as? Well, it means the new Impressionism. It's not as as fabulous as the French artists, you know, the Impressionists mm -hmm. and the Impressionist movement. They have sometimes marvelous paintings where the light shimmers, you know, that takes real, that takes talent, you see. 
<laughs> I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> Humble, I love it. <laughs> no, you always learn. Actually, I learn a lot from my students mm -hmm. because they get to a problem and then I have to solve it for them, you know, or tell them how to solve it. And that, and that I, I learn. Right, you know? it may be a situation that you haven't come across painting the exactly. way you do, and exactly. now you have to figure it out together and you learn yeah. something new. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. And, uh, I, well, that's not mine. Is that Michelle's? It's oh, here. not mine. And this, wait a minute. <laughs> Well, while Margaret's answering her phone, we'll, we'll go to commercial break and we'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> This is Bill Olson, drama teacher at Charlotte High School, and I listen to Partnership for the Arts Talk Show. Okay, so we are back uh, from commercial break, and I want to thank Bill for that. He came in and did an interview a while back and gave us that commercial, so Bill, thank you for that. So we are sitting here with Margaret Egley, and we were talking about your style of work and all of that. Yes, And yes. how you teach class and the things that you learn from your students when you do that. I got a question for you. When your classes will range in size, and sometimes you have had that main 18, gallery. 18. 18. How do you manage when you have 18 students and there maybe each one of them doing something different? Yeah, well, you know something, it's actually easier than everybody with the same thing. Really? It, yes. I liked it. I, when I, it's a fresh start when I come to another canvas, mm -hmm. and it's different. Okay, you know, and it's I can I can see faster maybe how they could use a color. I think it's it's better. But today, for, like I said, we're right. doing the same thing. It makes it a wee bit more difficult because it's always the same, you know. <laughs> and people are don't always paint at the same speed or at the same level, doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I, I didn't think about that. I really thought it would have been the other way around. That yeah. it would have been harder with everybody else doing their own yeah. projects, but I, I see what you're saying. And, yeah. it, and it's actually fun because they have to step back and all the time and look, right. step way back and look what they are doing. And then they can go make a circle around. You know, everybody stops, put the brushes down, and walks around back to their own canvas. But they look at everything else just to see how how people are working mm -hmm. on the canvas, the different subjects, sujet, you know. And, and that's yes, mm -hmm. and then that's interesting because then they go back to their canvas and they can look at it with a fresh eye. You get so used to looking at something, you don't see mistakes. I got gotcha. you. know, like perspective and maybe tone and maybe the light mm -hmm. is, is, makes things go back when they're lighter. Mm -hmm. And in the front, they're warmer and darker or yes. so fuller, the colors, you know. Mm -hmm. Didn't work, you know, just step back and look at it. And the most problem I think people have painting oil is that they don't know how to work with the brush. You know, how much paint do I put on my brush? And, and then they put too much on and then they want to go near to it and smear it, you mm -hmm. know? And Blend that's it. another thing, it's crazy. If you mix more than three to four colors together, you have mud. Right. Yes. yes. You, it's mud you can use in some places but not in many, you know, <laughs> maybe in the shadows, a bit muddy, you know. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite subject matter that you've painted? Because uh, some of my favorite paintings of yours are the chickens and roosters that you do. But oh, yeah. what is your favorite? I love to do chickens because they don't stand still. So you have to work very fast. And then you have to work from memory a lot of times, you know. Okay. I did the chickens in the chicken run. I was sitting in the chicken run, you know, uh -huh. and the chickens, if they weren't standing on my head, that would have been good. One went off, one went off <laughs> on, ran over my palate and had red paint on its foot. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Very no, authentic. But, yeah, yeah. And, which is okay, you yeah. know. And I like to do landscapes, but most of all, I love to do portraits. 
because they're people oh. and they're, they have character mm -hmm. and the, you see it in their face if they're older. It's beautiful, you know, I, and, I, and I get to know the person that is sitting for me. I love to do portraits, you know, but again, maybe some people think it's more like an oil sketch, but it, for me, I like to paint fast. The faster the better, because then the emotion that I have or the passion I have when I sit down my model, because I always make a cold light from the top mm -hmm. left, say, and then a warm light from bottom right onto their face. So you have cold on the left top and warm on the right oh, bottom. Yeah. And then you have three dimension immediately, which right. is so interesting. And obviously you love to do it. Yeah, I gotta I'd, see some of that work. I gotta yeah. go check out your website. Yeah, <laughs> you haven't yet. <laughs> no, <laughs> bad boy. <laughs> well, we I have seen it, and it's very lovely. She's definitely a master of her craft. It shows through in all of her work. So go check it out, Dave. And I'm kind of teasing here. I have visited your website, and everyone else, you should too, uh, because Margaret really is a, a master at what she does. And I love it for the fact, Margaret, that you can do portrait, you can do landscape, and all those other variations uh, that you teach. And not a lot of people can do that. The thing is, it's color. It, but it's all just color. Differences it make if it's a portrait or landscape. From, from her, she yeah. is... It's, it's obvious that you are know your color very well because yes. I can see the bright, light, airiness of all of those layers of color. It's beautiful in your work. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't paint over a lot, and I don't mix paint on the canvas, which, you know, you can't keep it clean. And then you're scraping. Do you work with the palette knife? I, I do it, but only at the end. Okay. And I find I can't manipulate palette knife as well as I can a brush. brush. Yes, that, it's, and that's true. It's so beautiful because I have brushes that you, you know, it's an angle brush, mm -hmm. flat. Yeah. yeah. And I use a synthetic bristle and then I can go onto the canvas and I make a very fine line because I mm -hmm. hold the brush at a different angle and then I press just a bit and it gets wide and then you can make leaves and... I need to come a little closer to the light. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because you were starting, starting to lean back as you were painting, yeah. you're leaning back <laughs> from the mic there. So. Yeah, I get carried away. No, that's good. <laughs> that's good. I love your description too. And I agree. I, I've done, I've attempted the palette knife. I've actually done it with some hard angles when I would, when yeah. I would actually scrape with it. But, but it's, it's good it. if you can. Mm -hmm. uh, Bernie Duffy. He's been in my class many times, and when he came to my class, I thought to myself, he's good, you know? And now he comes on my trips, and, and he oh. works with the palette knife, and he does some really nice things. Does he do it all in palette knife? Yes, all. Oh. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's handful. That's impressive. Yeah, that's a handful. That must be so fun to watch your students the develop different, yeah. and get better in front of your eyes over yeah, the years. I have, I have some came and were just just getting to be good. You're right. Well, yeah. yeah you oh, then, but they they have a lot of fun with it. They do. Yes. They do. I, I have a lot of fun too. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's why your students have a lot of fun because you yeah. have a lot of fun in there. Yeah. You're very inspirational. I think anybody listening to the show can tell that. Comes across with your students too. Because yeah. you can see that in the classrooms when you go yeah. around and everybody's painting and having fun. And, and as you said, you have them step back and they take a look at it and then they step back into it. And, I, and I've seen reactions from your students doing that going, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yes, because when you're up close to a mm -hmm. canvas and you're painting, 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 and you never get back, you never see it. Mm -hmm. You can't see it. It's too near. Right. Now, Margaret, we were talking earlier and I found it interesting that you prefer your students do not refer to a photograph when painting. No, because, you know, when you take a photograph and something is near the camera, it's huge. Mm -hmm. And then what's in middle, it's correct, and far away is much smaller. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just distorted. Mm. And it's not, I, I don't like people working from from photographs. photographs. Mm -hmm. Rather they go out and sketch 
and then try to remember the colors or take a photograph for the colors. Mm -hmm. But uh, not it's paint not it. paint directly from it. But you, you, we're forced to do that at the school, you know, mm -hmm. here in the VAC. Well, again, that's why you do the plein air, so you can get outside and yeah, yeah. actually do those. I yeah. do one plein air, and then I do one uh, at my house with the, all the students. Right. Have a lunch afterwards. Anything else you want to mention, Margaret? Are you are you good there? I think I've done enough talking here, <laughs> <laughs> don't you think? Oh, you're sweet. <laughs> no, you're, uh, I love talking to you. Uh, it, I just learned so much. When Thank I, you. When I listen to you, especially yes. like the painting and the terms. And again, we're, we did the short interview, and, I, and I've and i talked to you on and off through the years. You've lived a very interesting life, and you're an excellent instructor. Uh, Thank you. Instructor. You tried to paint once. Why don't you come and join me? <laughs> you know, I'm going to do that. Yeah, I'm why not? I'm going to do that because I, I love painting with oil, and I haven't done it in a long time. Actually, you know, it's good to have a break. Mm -hmm. You know, you paint and paint and paint, but it's good to have a break. When you come back, you have m much more elan. You have much more enthusiasm, you know. Well, I, I have definitely taken a break. <laughs> I'm busy with the show and everything It's else. broken. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to start over again, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's great. Michelle, you got anything else? Thank you, Margaret. This was a charming conversation. I am definitely inspired to go home and break out my oil paints. There you go. Yep. There I've definitely go. taken too long of a break lately from <laughs> painting. And after everything you've told us today, I feel yeah. like I could give it a go. So it, it looks like you've got two students <laughs> now, Margaret. Sure. Why yeah, not? Exactly. <laughs> well, Margaret. Thank you for taking time out. And I know you're, you've you got a little bit of time, but you've got that class today. To yes, get ready to yes. Go, to go do. So thank you for taking the time to come in and sit down and talk with us. It's, it's just been a joy. It was a privilege for me. Yeah. It was interesting. Yeah. Okay. So with that, everyone, we're going to wrap up the show. So, Michelle, you have a good day. And I want to make sure we mention, happy birthday to you tomorrow. Here's your birthday. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to, to me. You. There you go. There you go, <laughs> Margaret. Way to go. So, everyone, we will talk to you soon where we sit down in front of the mic and we talk about it.